certainly to stir the cockles, doesn't it? Well, joining us this morning is former Army officer Patrick Benham Crosswell. Good morning to you, sir. Um, can we start with just explaining to us just why and how um, Armed Forces Day is so important? Well, it was set up in 2006 by Gordon Brown to be a celebration and, uh, if you like, yeah, 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 a, a celebration of serving um, and, li and living veterans rather than perhaps Remembrance Day, which, of course, um, remembers um, um, the fallen veterans. Um, as the armed forces have got smaller and um, the Cold War ran down, it's been very difficult um, for many servicemen to actually engage with the public when they do what they do, um, necessarily people like submarine crews um, um, are, are very um, removed from the public gaze. And events like this give opportunities for the public to engage with um, the people who are devoting their lives to protecting them. Yeah, I mean, our reporter there made the point that it's celebrating many decades of peace. But of course, at the same time, we have to remember that not all countries are at peace at the moment. We think, of course, of our friends in Ukraine. And we need to say thank you as well and acknowledge the work being done by uh, the armed forces, including ours, to keep as much peace as possible out there. And we've got many forces out there at the moment on exercises as much as anything else, haven't we? Um, yes, I mean, it hasn't been a universally peaceful eight decades. I seem to remember there was some trouble in Northern Ireland and a few conflagrations in the Gulf that um, um, people were ready to go and um, act in this nation's interest to, you know, to restore it. But yes, um, peace isn't something that just happens. Peace happens because people work very hard, uh, ideally in the background, to make sure that peace is the best option for um, those who perhaps are a more violent disposition. And how important are events like today for making sure that conscription rates stay up and people have an active interest in joining the armed forces, being part of the future? I think they're vital. I mean, it's a personal opinion, but I mean, you know, I think the armed forces have, uh, for reasons of economy, probably cut back too far from engaging with the public. Um, the, the, there's many reasons um, for that. But, you know, when I was when I was serving, if you were based in England, if the local village fate phoned up and said, you know, can you bring a couple of tanks along, then we'd bring a couple of tanks along. <laughs> um, that, that, that facility doesn't exist now. And so, yes, it's increasingly vital. I mean, a lot of people think, oh, yes, today is going to be a wonderful day and it will be a reminder to us all of the people we should thank for um, helping keep the peace and fighting for it. But... Um, it's very important, too, as, as Martin was saying, for conscription. But do we do enough, do you think, for the rest of the year? Um, I, 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 you're always struck when you go to America that when mm. if the minute a, yeah. an American, uh, somebody at an airport or whatever, they see that somebody is a veteran or is wearing uniform, they always say, and thanks for your service, yeah, thanks for what you do. Are we, do we do enough of that? Are we en emotional enough about our armed forces? Um, yes, I mean, there's always the, the, the British stiff upper lip, I think, uh, uh, a, a, a natural reserve. Um, um, I, I mean, I, I make the broader point that, you know, usually whenever things go wrong, be it floods or the, you know, blockages on the Channel Tunnel, it's quite often the armed forces that turn up to fix it first. And I think quietly. Uh, most people in the United Kingdom are aware that when stuff gets bad or whatever, there's an organisation with a command structure that can come and help sort it out very quickly. Um, within the UK, of course, because of the, the, the um, Ulster Troubles, there was a long history um, now diminishing in the armed forces of actually never wearing a uniform in public and being very discreet about what you do. And it, it, it may be that um, as peace goes forward and with the uh, uh, impact of things like Help for Heroes, um, you know, when that stuff, pe pe people are more, more um, open about what they do for a job. Mm. And Patrick, can I ask you about the, um, there's been word of changing the age of first uh, sign-up from moving from 16 to 18, but when we covered that on GB News a couple of weeks ago, we were contacted by, by loads of servicemen and service women who were very, very strongly in favour of being able to join up as, as a 16-year-old, the making of the man, the making of a woman. A lot of people that don't want to go to sixth form or have to wait until 18. How important do you think it is um, to keep the age of 16 for people to be allowed into the armed forces? 
w without doubt, the, the what used to be called the junior leaders program, the, 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 the sixteen year olds signing up. Um, go on to become disproportionately good soldiers and disproportionately high proportion and get promoted early. Um, if they want to do it, uh, and you know, they've taken taken suitable advice and they're looked after um, suitably, then it seems to me to be eminently sensible for everyone. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the debate about at what age are you an adult can um, disappear into, you know, the, the far... Sorry, I'm wittering. Uh, yeah, uh, the, the debate about at, at what age you become an adult is, is complex or whatever. But if a if a 16 year old wants to go off and um, join the armed forces in a in a safe way for them and in a way to the benefit of the country, you know what's not to like. Yeah, absolutely. What are you going to be doing today? Will you be marking the day in any way today, or just watching it on the telly like the rest of us? Uh, sadly, um, um, duty comes first, and I've got a bit of work to do, so I'm taking, right. a, taking a trip to Leicestershire and back. Oh, sorry <laughs> about that. <laughs> anyway, it's great to talk to you. I'll, I'll be looking out of the window for the red arrows flying past. Absolutely, yeah, I think we all will. Thank Thanks. you so much for joining us and getting up so early for us too. Thank you.